Okay, so this is your 20 tonne log splitter. Um, starting procedure for this unit and most of our four strokes will be the same. First step, put your fuel into it. And fill your fuel tank up. After filling with petrol, next step is to fill the unit with oil. When the engines are supplied, they don't come with any oil in them, or if they do, it's a very small amount, so you'll need to top your oil level up before it'll start. Remove your grey dipstick. When you're topping the oil up, use a funnel and put your oil in slowly. If you try and force the oil in too quickly, it'll bubble back out of the filler hole and you'll get an incorrect reading and waste oil. So I'm using a pump to fill it up. Put that in, pump, 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 till oil comes back out of the filler hole. Then check it with your dipstick. Clean your dipstick off with a rag or a tissue. It'll be nice and clean. Put it into the dipstick hole, wait for a second, take it back out and you'll see oil on the hash marks. It needs to be all the way to the full mark before the unit will start. If it's not, just keep topping it up. If it's full on the dipstick, you're good to go. Screw your dipstick in and tighten it back up. When you receive your new log splitter, you will need to fill the hydraulic oil chamber. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of what uh, symptoms the unit will show if you don't fill it up correctly. After you receive your unit, you will need to fill the hydraulic oil reservoir, which is this chamber here. To access it, you need to screw this silver filler plug out. It also doubles as a dipstick. It can be quite tight the first time you go to remove it, so you may need to use a fair bit of grip and force. Once you take it out, you have your dipstick, clean the dipstick off, check the level as supplied. If the level is low, in this case it's empty, you'll need to fill it with hydraulic oil. Just as a note, if you are filling using a funnel, ensure that the inside of the funnel is spotlessly clean, otherwise you might contaminate the oil as you pour it into the motor and cause issues. Make sure you're using hydraulic oil. As you can see, it is now at the full mark on the dipstick. Once it's at that level, the unit's ready to operate. Screw your cap back on. Just ensure that you stroke the ram to its full travel. That'll make sure that any air bubbles that are trapped in the system will get pumped out and it should work correctly after that. Okay, so after filling your fuel and your oil, the next step is your choke and fuel tap positions. So to, before you start the unit, make sure you set the throttle, which is this silver lever, to about the halfway position. That's the full extent of its travel. It's going to about halfway. Your choke needs to be in the cold position. This grey one here is the choke, all the way across. Your fuel tap needs to be turned on. That way is on, it's also labelled on the plastic, but it might be a bit hard to see in the footage. So if that's off, fuel tap is on. This is your ignition on off switch. It has, again, labels on and off. Make sure it's in the on position. You hear a click when it goes on. Then the next step is just starting it. Normally it'll take maybe half a dozen pulls when the unit's brand new to work some petrol through the carburetor. We'll see how this one goes. It's a nice steady pull, should get it going. Once the unit starts, make sure you put the choke into the run position. If it's in cold, it will pop and blow smoke. Let it idle for a few seconds to warm up, then you can move it to the grab it fast position to operate the machinery. Once it's started, you can put it in the idle position if you're not using it and want to save some fuel. To turn the unit off, just flick it to the off position and it should stop. 
that's starting most of our four-stroke engines.